thank you. Uh, dear all, I would like first to thank you very much for inviting me. It's a great pleasure to me <clears throat> to be here with you today. And uh, I would like to present you a part of what we have done in the last decade in the field of research, one of the largest early medieval cemetery in the southeastern Alpine region. Uh, we will mainly be talking about the analysis of old archaeological excavations, which actually means stratigraphic analysis of non-stratigraphic excavations. And this will be shown by example of Župna Cerko in Kran. So the lecture, the aim is to present the method for compiling, managing, and analyzing archaeological data for very large medieval cemetery. As we said before, the case study is Župna Cerko. Uh, the lecture is divided into two following parts. Uh, first, introduction to archaeology of Župna Cerko. Uh, and the current state of research. And uh, the aim here is to show the great variety of archaeological data from 60 years of excavations. And in the second part, uh, we will show uh, the managing of the archaeological data. So the aim there is to show the method for compiling, managing, and analyzing uh, with some practical demonstrations of the process up to constructing and also to deconstructing the Harris matrix. Uh, uh, we will later see what does it mean. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the view of today's Quran uh, from the south. You can see the Alps uh, in the background. In the foreground on the left side is river uh, Sava. And this is uh, on the <clears throat> right side, the Kokra River. Um, Kokra is the left tributary uh, uh, to River Sava, and the confluence is right here in the right uh, lower corner. Um, and uh, between these two rivers uh, rises a quite high conglomerate uh, promontory uh, where our cemetery is, is uh, located. So this arrow is the location of the cemetery. So this is the biggest church. And I will show also the position of late antique uh, cemetery called Lai in Krain, which was uh, uh, in use in late five and whole sixth and early seventh century. And this is also another early medieval cemetery uh, uh, across the river Sava, uh, uh, which is partly uh, uh, from the same time as our Župna Cerko in Kran. But we will focus now on Župna Cerko in Kran. This is the view from west. You can see that um, uh, conglomerate promontory, uh, the, the position of the church. And this is one older uh, look to, uh, to geology of promontory, uh, which is very well visible uh, from the east side, from the canyon of River Kokra. Uh, and this bedrock is conglomerate. So this is uh, the geology also. Uh, uh, at uh, our cemetery. So this is a closer look uh, to Župna Cirkev. This whole area was uh, cemetery. Uh, and as we uh, said, uh, uh, it's uh, the largest early medieval cemetery on the territory of southeastern Alpine uh, Alps. Uh, and uh, it was uh, excavated between 1953 and uh, uh, 2013. And there was documented almost 3,000 graves and more than a third of which are early medieval. And between the 8th and 18th century, 1,000 years of continuous funerary activity took place in much the same li very limited space. Uh, for example, I am um, showing here one, uh, this red area, uh, where is uh, one of the highest density of the grapes. Uh, and I divided this, uh, this part to, to three layers from left to right. Uh, the first one shows uh, here, uh, those dots are uh, more than uh, 200 grapes together. And this second one are early only medieval. And these are 
post early medieval. And uh, consequently, the cemetery is showing not only horizontal, but also and predominantly uh, vertical growth over the time. And this is the main difference compared to the smaller uh, early medieval cemetery, cemeteries in the surrounding area. So we have here the real stratigraphy in vertical sense. So long term of excavation brought not only methodological innovation in the scientific field, but also led to the use of different spatial documentation of the cemetery. Here I'm, I'm showing um, just, uh, for example, the terrain drawings from, from the very first excavation to the last ones. Uh, and you can see this progress also in the drawings from from graves which were uh, documented uh, as a pins to, to improvement of, of the <clears throat> terrain drawings. So um, available archaeological documentation is extremely diverse. Uh, of course, due to long time span of excavation that resulted in the use of very different excavation methods. Uh, most spatial documentation is the result of uh, every time ad hoc established grids uh, within coordinate systems, which were systematically evaluated together with the measurements uh, in a revision which started in 2011 uh, uh, at our institute. And the reconstructed grid of quadrants made it possible to place uh, archaeological drawings of graves and larger level plans into the absolute state plan coordinate system with georeferenced uh, measurement points, of course, using GIS. Um, and um, uh, I will show in the following slides uh, some examples uh, about uh, the method of excavation. Uh, of course, uh, it was not uh, uh, been entirely excavated using stratigraphic method. And arbitrary level excavation methods uh, lasted uh, until 90s and first stratigraphic excavation were, uh, <clears throat> were only in 2011. Um, and here we can see uh, an example of, so this upper part was already removed and this also on the right side. And these are, uh, uh, these, these are graves which they documented at the time of the uh, when the picture was taken. So uh, maybe it's um, uh, interesting also this for the history of archaeology, that uh, direction of digging of uh, individual planums in 1953 mostly ran from east to west, as the skeletons have frequent re recent damage in the lower limbs. Uh, they were digging until they came across the leg bones uh, and then they documented uh, graves. And this was so-called frontal digging, which was already in use in uh, some other, uh, other uh, post Second World, uh, for Second World War II uh, uh, excavations in early medieval sites. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, poor visibility of burial pits is very typical for uh, for all cemeteries of long duration. And uh, of course, excavators have described them as non-obvious or invisible. Uh, and in documentation, the skeleton is synonym with the grave. Uh, analysis of the drawing documentation shows that during non-stratigraphic excavation, burial pits were reliably documented only in a few cases. We will see later. Uh, uh, the shape, of course, of the grave pit could only be recognizable it was, uh, if it was uh, buried deep enough in a layer which was uh, different uh, color or it was different in composition uh, uh, of the uh, overlying humus layer. Um, so this is one example from excavation 1984 inside of the church. Uh, this is the first, one of the first, uh, the topmost uh, layers, uh, planus, and uh, uh, we can see that they, uh, uh, that the grave pits were uh, not visible uh, in, in, in every uh, occasion, maybe here uh, and, but one meter and, and half uh, deeper, this is stratigraphically 
uh, the oldest grave in that in that the same area. Uh, uh, it was possible to document it also the grave uh, grave pit. Uh, this is for example. So um, some of the grave pits were later uh, drowned and also idealized in the cabinet for publication purposes. Uh, as can be seen if we compared uh, original uh, original documentation with, uh, for example, you can see uh, on the left side the original situation, which was taken by by photo, uh, and you should uh, look closer this this skeleton, uh, which is then uh, then uh, dropped to uh, uh, in in that way. Uh, on, draw, on terrain drawing, and uh, we can see that uh, the right lower part of leg, uh, the tibias are missing, uh, the, the tibia is missing, uh, but this is uh, for publication purposes, it was, uh, uh, it was added also this leg, and uh, everything was, uh, uh, was uh, in more uh, uh, better shape here so also the, the great pit is uh, is drawn but uh, it was not seen at the time of of excavation uh one maybe one another um, uh things is also when we are dealing with old documentation uh that problem that uh, that uh, the comparing the original uh, original mm, terrain uh diary uh, with the drawing that there is there are uh, a discrepancy uh, for example in the in the diary uh, it's right in the left arm laid in the abdominal part but we can see that here uh, this this part is missing uh, we we had more uh, of this uh, uh, situation especially for post early medieval graves and uh, it's mostly like due to the fact that the parts of the skeleton were removed before they were drowned because the density of the grave was very big and uh, it could also happen that, uh, that uh, in some parts uh, the excavation uh, were faster uh, and uh, to document everything was in some occasions uh, difficult. Uh, another, another uh, the thing is that early medieval graves uh, were separated from other graves. Uh, they were, of course, primarily focused at that time uh, for the early medieval burials. Uh, and um, this was, among others, manifested in the double numbering system of the graves at the time of excavation. Uh, they used uh, Arabic numerals for early medieval graves and uh, Roman numerals for so-called, they call them the Baroque graves, which are younger than, than this, for all the same. So uh, the double numbering si system started in uh, 1953 and it lasted until 1984. Uh, this means that uh, row datation must have been done uh, in situ, but how? Uh, the criteria were uh, were sometimes mixed, but okay. Uh, um, they observed that early medieval graves, which they recognized them because of the grave goods, typically typically for that period, that they had darker bones than others, and the problem was that this experience was generalized to all other graves without grave goods, uh, but they were the same color of bones like the early medievals. Uh, and um, okay, the problem has its roots in the history of archaeology, but we will, know, we will not go in that direction now. Uh, the fact is that the graves from younger archaeological periods haven't been treated equally than uh, early medieval graves. Uh, so this is also the data for our, uh, for our uh, analyze later uh, that we have this in mind um, during the analyze. Uh, and uh, also the correct writing of Roman numerals is problem 
especially at younger skeletons in documentation, uh, both in the diaries and on the dra drawings. So uh, an increased number of incorrect Roman numerals uh, records uh, was uh, detected when the numer numeral was more than seven characters long. And this led to entering the errors, errors in the documentation already at the, at the time of its creation. Uh, and when, uh, we later transformed, transformed Roman numerals, of course, to, uh, to Arabic. Uh, we, or, we left P as a part of history of this row, row datation as post early medieval. And this one is early medieval and we, we uh, just, we had to make those codes for, uh, for graves from different, different excavation campaign, uh, campaigns. Um, uh, of course, today we know that identification of early medieval and later skeletons based on bone color alone is problematic. Uh, it may be caused, uh, it, it, it may have been influenced by a var variety of biological, geological, and other factors. Factors, uh, and we can prove it also with stratigraphy. Just for short example, uh, we, uh, I choose here uh, some of the sequences, uh, and we can show here on the left side. Okay, this uh, lower grave two hundred and forty-four. Uh, okay, it has uh, early medieval. Uh, um, head circlets uh, and this one was of course uh, 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 determinated as a baroque grave uh, uh, with roman numerals because it has a typical uh, younger uh, grave goods okay uh, today is missing the pilgrim ba batch uh, what uh, means that this grave grave was uh, later than 16 or about later than 16th century. So, um, and another example, okay, this one, 269, also it's early medieval, but upper is, was recognized as, as uh, non-early medieval, but we don't know how, probably because just of the uh, wrong coloration of bones or not uh, wrong, but uh, uh, not so dark, probably. But in, in this case, we can clearly show that uh, they were wrong. Uh, the grave of 233 uh, had those typical pair of buckles, which are usually found in the inner side, of, uh, on the, in the upper side of the femurs. Uh, and they were part, part of uh, medieval uh, clothing. I don't know, 13th century, uh, 13th, uh, 14th century, probably, but, uh, but in any case before 1430, because this, uh, these all graves are cut by the, uh, by the wall of the late Gothic church. Um, so uh, uh, we can show here the, the problematic of this, uh, of this row datation with the bone color. Uh, so the most important element of recording and observation in modern excavation is, of course, stratigraphic relation. Uh, but arbitrary level excavations haven't been so focused uh, on such data, at least in our case. Um, so, okay, it's uh, uh, just to show this red, uh, we all know this, uh, this picture from Harris. Uh, these are... Uh, these are arbitrary levels. Uh, the problem is because they can uh, uh, cut uh, cut uh, levels in the same levels in different parts. But okay, these are stratigraphic uh, excavation which uh, uh, which are uh, searching and uh, uh, trying to uh, to follow the original uh, original uh, boundaries of the of the uh, uh, stratigraphic unit. So, uh, mm, but the fact is that stratigraphic relations uh, between graves were very rarely recorded in diaries. We were intentionally seeking information on stratigraphic relations, those that were recorded intentionally on drawings and diaries, and also unintentionally, uh, which can be found in uh, 
completely randomly on the photographs and some other parts of the uh, archive of the uh, of the cemetery. So um, uh, we also ask uh, ourselves how many stratigraphic relations were recorded during the arbitrary level excavation, and we uh, made one analyze and. On the left uh, column is um, the year of ex excavation first and then slash and the number of excavated graves. And uh, it's surprisingly that at first excavation, uh, they, uh, uh, they wrote uh, uh, 84 relations grave to grave. That means, uh, okay, the, this grave is carted by this grave. Uh, um, and uh, it's uh, also interesting that uh, in uh, 1972, when was uh, excavated uh, more than 700 graves, there were only uh, 35 relations uh, drawn between the graves. So um, it's, uh, and uh, in case of other relations, so uh, I mean, in grave to, to some kind of structure to wall, uh, or uh, they, uh, there is predominantly uh, uh, drawn uh, relations to, uh, for example, for modern pipe or something. So uh, very unuseful uh, for, for the analyze. Uh, so, but according to the drawings, there were many stratigraphic relations between the graves. Uh, well, more about that we will say in second part of the lecture. Uh, and, mm, Yes, uh, the most frequently recorded information, as I said, uh, uh, are the relations of the grave with some kind of modern infrastructure, like, like a grave cut by pipe and etc. But we are looking for information that tells us about the stratigraphy between the graves and other, uh, other uh, elements uh, which were found on the cemetery, uh, like fireplaces, walls, and not recent elements of the site. In other words, we are doing a stratigraphic analysis of non-stratigraphic excavation. The result can only be reconstructed stratigraphy because many parts of information are missing due to arbitrary excavation. One of the main objectives was to produce a relative chronology of the graves, uh, both arbitrary and stratigraphically excavated, and then visualized in the form of, of a Harris matrix. And to achieve this, uh, in 2011, our institute uh, with partners uh, start to, uh, to make inventorization, uh, analyzes, uh, uh, documentation of archives, uh, uh, analysis of archaeological finds, anthropological remains, and archaeological context. Uh, and the result was uh, at first, in the first year, digitized and transcripted field diaries, uh, uh, which were published first uh, and uh, then followed uh, scientific critical uh, publications uh, and uh, catalogs of graves and finds in 2016 until 2019. There was the last one. Uh, and then it was also uh, uh, finished the stratigraphy of Župna Cerke and Kran, so, so uh, this one, uh, and uh, the type of chronology of early medieval jewelry, but it's still unpublished, uh, but it's in progress. Uh, so, uh, uh, only in 2016, uh, it was possible to produce a common plan of cemetery for the first time in the history of the research. Uh, and as I said, in 2020, a stratigraphy uh, was finished. And as can be seen, the spatial data processing is not possible without digital tools. And uh, this is uh, the end of first part. And now we can move to the second part of the lecture, uh, where will we present the method uh, up, to, up to, uh, to Harris matrix. Uh, so, uh, we were using pre-digital tools. Uh, first one 
was GIS. Uh, we uh, were used it for uh, building different spatial databases. Uh, then uh, next tool was Microsoft Access as a main database uh, and the tool for uh, visualization of the relative chronology and for the creating of Harris metrics, I used uh, the program Stratify. Uh, GIS uh, in this part, uh, as I said before, the one of the major challenges was to unify spatial data. So drawings in different scales and relative coordinate systems within the modern coordinate system. Uh, Unifying of spatial data is understood as getting the archaeological plans into the same coordinate system by using the method of georeferencing. Uh, so one fixed position already placed in the state uh, system, uh, and this is another uh, not yet uh, georeferenced, and uh, this process is uh, shown here. Uh, so. The result was the, that spatial documentation from different excavation campaigns is unified within the same coordinate system. Uh, and at this point, uh, the production of new spatial data uh, begins. Um, of course, uh, the density of graves is too big to use just regional georeference drawings during the analysis of stratigraphy. It must go for for combination of both. So um, uh, we decided to, to make for every skeleton uh, the smallest possible encircle encirclement uh, due to the fact that grave pit, it's not visible. Uh, and uh, for that kind of analyze uh, is not, um, this kind, this type of drawings is not uh, is not uh, useful. Those pins are not, uh, those types uh, we excluded from, uh, from uh, that kind of analyze. But in, in, in these occasions, we, we, uh, we check other information from, uh, from photos, uh, from diaries to, to make sure that one of uh, the, that uh, relations are correct. Uh, so our uh, our great uh, our the biggest uh, uh, the biggest source of data were uh, those types of uh, drawings which were uh, very uh, uh, well documented and uh, I can say that uh, I haven't said that yet uh, the in 2011 uh, started uh, uh, excavation. Uh, were covered all the same areas which were uh, excavated in the uh, previous uh, campaigns. Uh, so we, uh, in some parts, we get also uh, the same structures which were uh, documented uh, already in the 60s. So we have, uh, we, uh, we were uh, uh, be able to compare uh, these elements and some kind of uh, of walls were uh, some of the walls were uh, were just the same uh, in in both uh, campaigns. So uh, we can call this last excavation some kind of uh, revisional uh, excavation excavations, uh, and uh, we uh, we were uh, happy to uh, to to prove also in that in that way that uh, our uh, placement of drawings in the in the uh, uh, state uh, national plan was uh, uh, was correct. So th this this is one of them uh, the biggest uh, proofs that analysis could uh, that is uh, reliable. So um, but in reality, an archaeological record of each excavated grave consists at least of one pit. Uh, of uh, and the boundary surface, the body and potential grave goods, and at least one field. But as mentioned above, uh, the available documentation about the grave pits and the backfields are scarce. Uh, and the vast majority of drawing uh, record only skeletons. 
our outline of the skeleton is actually a reproduction of the smallest possible grave pit that once exist, existed. Um, and methodologically, this means that each grave is treated as a stratigraphic group. Um, another tool was uh, Microsoft Access, and every grave uh, uh, is also part of the of this uh, main database in Microsoft Access, and uh, Access is storing uh, all the archaeological data which we derive from uh, diaries, catalogs, uh, drawings, plans, uh, and also photos. Um, and uh, at this point, uh, stratigraphic data, uh, stratigraphic uh, analyze uh, could be. Uh, started. So uh, this is, uh, uh, as I mentioned mentioned before, uh, the tool for managing relations between uh, stratigraphical units and their visualizations, the, which result in a Harris matrix. It's stratified. Uh, there are a lot. There are more those kind of programs, but I used this one in in the time when I began. Uh, and uh, Stratify builds the Harris metrics combining our data by using mathematical algorithms. So it's very useful uh, in, in, in that occasion where, where is number of stratigraphic, stratigraphic units, I don't know, more than 50 or, or 100, uh, because uh, it's, uh, uh, every time when we insert uh, some relation, uh, it uh, Stratify uh, uh, accept or refuse our our relation uh, because it's uh, 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 if it's some kind of uh, wrong uh, relation, which uh, uh, unfortunately often happens when you have such uh, a big amount of data. Uh, so it says, uh, oh, this relation is not possible. Uh, so uh, all three digital tools are necessary for analysis. And uh, as we said, this is the stratigraphic analysis of arbitrary excavation. So uh, since the cemetery was in use throughout the Middle Ages, one of, uh, on the one hand, the stratigraphic relations are many, but on the other hand, they are due to the compressed archaeological record difficult to discern. And um, GIS and uh, Microsoft Access databases uh, enables to query the data in real time in order to extract and put data for Harris metrics. Uh, so the result is relative chronology of the graves. Mm, and now I will show um, the process of uh, mapping the grapes. Uh, and we are again at that red area, like in the, uh, in the beginning. And uh, this is a closer view uh, in reality. This is a north, north, northern uh, wall of the church. And this is one quadrant number 16, excavated 1972, uh, where was in area six by six meter, uh, excavated 155 graves. And the topmost was only 17 centimeter below the surface. Uh, and the deepest uh, grave was one meter deep. Uh, of course, uh, we have to have in mind that the churchyards was or were all the time uh, subversed to different uh, building programs and that uh, that uh, shallow grave was not initially so uh, so shallow uh, and now we are starting with uh, with mapping so this is the first plenum which were documented in that area. So uh, we are now in, in, as we can say, in GIS, and we start to map 
the, the those grapes. So first planum and and the encircled uh, of the uh, of the skeletons and another planum uh, and again the same procedure with with encirclement uh, and uh, there was uh, there were eleven planums. And you can see that the density was really, really big. And uh, every time more and more graves and, and another planum and again, mapping. And we are approaching to bottom. Uh, but if, if you see, there is no, there are still no visible uh, grave pits uh, and we are not yet at the bottom uh, and now uh, we are approaching the bottom and uh, now there they were uh, be they were uh, documented also the grave pits uh, which were now visible uh, and this one, this is a stratigraphically the oldest grave in that area. Uh, this is a double grave, uh, and it's uh, and also this. Uh, no, I I made the uh, uh, grave pits uh, in brown color. So these are the only only five grave pits which uh, could be discerned uh, at this uh, very bottom. Um, and now I turned off the, the drawings and we can see that the density. And uh, now I, uh, I mapped, uh, now I, I put on only, only these uh, graves, which are uh, in some way uh, stratigraphically connected uh, in relation to grave pits, so or direct or indirect way so also for this and this just to see how many relations is there and now i'm showing only this part uh, of uh, of the deepest of the of the biggest uh, grave uh, pit uh, and it's here you can see also in in matrix uh, so this rectangle here is uh, is the the it represent this uh, this grave. Uh, it's a double grave. We had also C14 datation for one of this skeleton, uh, and we know that it's not older than uh, than mid than late seventh uh, century, uh, but it's not also younger than uh, than uh, uh, middle eighth uh, century. And then there in the next rectangle, I, I marked uh, the graves uh, which are furnished and they are early medieval. So they, they have uh, uh, head circlets and fingerings typical for, for that period. And then they are followed by uh, different graves which are younger and they are without grave goods. Uh, and then uh, the, 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 uh, this uh, rectangle which uh, uh, shows uh, uh, the youngest graves with grave goods. These are also the youngest, of course, but they don't have uh, grave goods, but these, uh, these have typical pilgrim badges. Uh, so they are uh, really young, just uh, from the uh, very end of the, uh, of the cemetery, which ended here uh, in uh, uh, in 1798. Um, so this is the same situation from the side view. I dissolved this uh, this <clears throat> compact uh, compact area uh, to, just to show that uh, in the deepest parts there are visible also uh, grave pits, as we said, and also the parts of prehistoric uh, stratigraphic units. Uh, there are in between also piles of stones above skeletons, paved surfaces, also scatter finds, uh, 
and these are of course the rates uh, and uh, all these we put into the uh, Harris matrix uh, also the scattered finds because um, we can later uh, we can later uh, 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 see uh, in case of of uh, damaged graves uh, we can also uh, we can find also the pairs of missing head circlets of something because uh, of the later uh, disturbances disturbances uh, of the graves uh, and uh, yeah uh, we can say that it's practically impossible to reconstruct the stratigraphy of the entire cemetery with the archaeological documentation of non-stratigraphic excavation uh, so uh, it was only possible to reconstruct a uh, stratigraphic sequence uh, sequences of the graves and relations to some of the other elements of the cemetery like walls pavements and the analysis included uh, uh, analysis uh, included 2500 uh, graves as stratigraphic groups and almost 300 parts of stratigraphic units which together form more than 4,000 pairs of stratigraphic relations. Uh, and the result is that Harris matrix is therefore over 16 meters long and up to one meter height if we, we plot it. Uh, and uh, in this way, a relative chronology of the graves was finished. But our second goal was to produce a relative chronology of the artifacts in the graves. And the problem that has emerged at this point is uh, that we were not aware of this problem at the starting point. Uh, and problem is that the matrix is too long, too large for normal use. Uh, and for this purpose, it's necessary to have a good visual support in matrix so that you can in real time um, uh, checking uh, the position and you can put the the different data in that uh, in metrics but with uh, uh, 16 meter long Harris metrics it's not possible so we uh, had to find a way to deconstruct the Harris metrics into smaller but completed parts of sequences of graves from stratigraphic oldest to the youngest grave in the sentence I'm showing here in the uh, lower part one example so that kind of matrix uh, we need to 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 make a part uh, uh, in all individual ways so we have four different uh, var variables uh, and we called it like chains or sequences of graves uh, and uh, and how we we were doing it so from mentioned more than four four thousand uh stratigraphic pairs from stratify which uh, include information older grave versus younger grave uh, a unique variation of the stratigraphic sequences were constructed and this resulted in the sixteen thousand more than sixty thousand individual branches or sequences that built up our Harris matrix. So we got 16,000 that kind of variables. Um, and for this purpose, we used the EVA computer program invented by Primoz Jakupin in 1980s, uh, but it still properly work also, also in Windows 10. So um, I use it what I have at that time uh, by the hand. And this tool was primarily designed for editing texts, texts and databases. And the program can also treat the rows as a database, a database that can be rearranged alphabetically, searched, anagrammed, concordant, uh, concordance, and text broken. So uh, using the EWA, individual uh, stratigraphic sequences were displayed in a horizontal sentence, sentence by sentence position. Uh, and the oldest grave or stratigraphical unit 
is on the left side of the sentence and the youngest on the right side. So uh, in this way, we, mm, we can, um, uh, we can uh, add, to, okay, the first thing is that we can visually uh, checking all the time uh, our stratigraphy uh, of the closed uh, sequences and uh, and such a database uh, uh, can be added uh, different uh, classified information to individual grades, like information about classified artifacts, uh, azimuths, hand position, and etc. We exported those data from uh, Microsoft main access database and uh, simply put them uh, put them into the those uh, sequences as a sent sentences and the most important is that we can visually control the process uh, all the time and in this way we can more easily select sequences for further analysis and for visualization as it's shown in the following example so uh, this is one uh, example of uh, visualization uh, we uh, we choose uh, some information which uh, we we think that it was uh, that we needed to vis visualize and uh, for example here uh, i i take uh, okay it's not clearly visible but there is a combination of of some unique uh, sequences and with uh, graves with uh, grave goods and graves without grave goods, goods. so if if uh, grave have uh, had uh, uh, grave goods there are here uh, inside and this other without means that they don't have uh, uh, grave goods and um, so for example now we can uh, show uh, that uh, those uh, those graves which are uh, uh, which are in between the graves with graves that they are also early medieval uh, and um, and we can make uh, different visualization of hand position or something but we uh, we had to uh, to deconstruct this whole uh, matrix to 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 more uh, to more smaller parts <clears throat> just to uh, make possible the visual uh, visual visualization and the con all the time the control during the analysis so uh, if we made some conclusions i show show the methods and the digital tools that i used at that time all this can also be done i believe with other more sophisticated tools uh, but I take what I had at this time, uh, and it may look like a complicated process, but almost uh, 3,000 graves cannot be properly handled manually, uh, especially not because of the highly branched stratigraphy of the graves. Uh, so I hope that this knowledge will be useful to you if you are ever confronted with this kind of problem. And I'm available for any advice at this uh, uh, at this uh, mail, and I will show uh, uh, the literature. So these are basic published sources for cemetery. Uh, these are some other publications related to the cemetery. Uh, the same and. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for your attention.